Hello everyone, it's Amy and welcome back for week 28 of the new Build Your Stash and Craft. Today we picked up some rice and we picked up this long fabric cat toy and we are going to make a book weight like Gail Augustinelle uses when she works on her, jam on her journals. So this was a request by Lala Gamma and she wanted to make our own book weight. Now they come in handy if you're working on journals and you want to keep them open, but they also work great um, if you are looking at a cookbook and it's a type that has a bound spine instead of the ring binder and you have to, you know, you want to keep it open or whether you just have um, an instructional book that is on your desk and you need to keep it open because you're working on something and looking at the book at the same time. So they do come in very handy for lots of different things. And so this is going to be a really simple project today. And um, pretty much it's almost made for us. We just have to change it a little bit. So we got this long cat toy because you want something that is going to reach um, approximately the span of a book. Now, you may have a really big book, um, but this will still cover the, the spine portion plus a good deal on each side of that spine to put weight to hold it down. So all we're going to do is we are just going to open this up and then we are going to take out the stuffing, which keep the stuffing because you can always use that for something later. And then we are going to fill it with rice and sew it back up again. That is how simple this winds up being. So when you, um, if you can get your scissors in there and get get it started to get a hold of your thread. Once you get one started, um, then it's easy to, to continue. So I'm just going to try and get just one of these stitches. And I just don't wanna put a hole in my fabric because if I put a hole in my fabric, the rice will be able to come out. Okay. I'm not liking the way that that's working really well. So we are going to try a little something different. So let me see here. If I can get my X-Acto knife out. Oops, and then I dropped it. Hold on. Okay. I got it. All right. So I'm going to grab a hold of one of these stitches. Because I just, my scissors are too fat to get in there. If you had a little tiny pair of scissors, you could get those. And I wonder if these will work. They're pretty fat too. So I just stuck my needle under the stitch. See how the stitch is coming over my needle? Be really careful again. You don't want to. Um, cut cut a hole in your fabric, but I am just going to, whoops, I lost it, put my needle in there under that stitch so that I have something to cut against. Be very careful. You can set it down on your desk. I'm going to do it so you can see it, but be very careful with this. You have to keep just that little point and run it across your thread right on top of the needle. And that way you can cut that one stitch. And I can tell you right now, my knife is not very sharp. So I'm gonna try just kind of going at an angle. Let me hold my needle with this hand. I'm just trying to be super careful to not, I get up here where my I'm coming up here where my um, knife is a little bit sharper. And again, whenever you are using these types of knives, be very, very careful. If you have some protective gloves, that would work really well. And you can buy special protective gloves. You can also, if you've just, I've got an old pair of like leather, kind of suede leather gloves. There we go. Broke that stitch. Put this away so that I don't cut myself and so let's see now that we broke that stitch just pulling on each side loosens that thread now the farther you go the tighter the stitch gets so what you can do 
so you're not pulling real hard on your fabric is just cut another one of those stitches and then just continue until you have removed or unhooked basically all of those stitches and there we go. Now, if you didn't get one of these cat toys or if you've got rice at home and you don't want to go buy a cat toy, you don't have to. I thought it was really cute with the tail. I'm going to keep the tail on there, which is why I opened this end, um, just because I like it. And there is a bell in here. And I think I'm going to throw the bell back in too. Now, I don't know if that will work or not because... I am thinking that the rice might get inside the bell. We'll have to see how big the holes are. Oh, the bell is completely enclosed in a little container. So I can put that back in there and it will still ring. And why does my book weight need to have a bell that rings? Or a tail? It doesn't. Just I think it's cute. Now you can see this here is where they stitched it. And you can see that that makes it a little bit uneven there. Um, if you pull that to try and straighten it out, what's going to happen is you you could snap that thread. And once you do that, you're going to wind up with a little hole that'll grow. Um, but even a little hole will let the rice out. So, so if it's like that, just leave it like that. It's totally okay. And if you don't have the cat toy, um, you can just take a long piece of fabric and fold it in half to whatever width you want it to be. Fold it right sides to right sides. So you would take the right side and fold that together and sew all along it. And then you would turn your fabric back the other way. Um, after sewing down one side and across the bottom, then you would turn it right side out and then stuff it like we're going to do right now. Oh, and I should have brought our funnel. We have a funnel in the series. So having a funnel makes it nice and easy to fill something like this at skinny because I forgot it, I'm going to make a little hole in my bag to hopefully make it a little easier to get the rice down into our book weight. And like I said, this is just such, you know, with the cat toy, this is the simplest thing ever. Now, I also could have put, um, I did have, um, I think it was Lala Gama that said this too, just to today, this morning, um, she said that uh, she had used rice and beans for weights of something and that she got mealworms um, in that. And I didn't know you could get it in rice or beans. I know for sure you can get it in flour and stuff like that. So um, I'm always careful about that kind of stuff. Now, I've made a lot of like rice um, heat warmers, you know, like you make them like this and you heat them up in the microwave to to put on your sore joints, or you can also put them in the freezer. Um, to me, they don't work real well in the freezer. Now you can make this as solid as you want it. The more rice you put in it, the heavier it's going to be. But um, what Lala Gama said was she got little tiny rocks and put them in there. So that's another really good idea, you know, like little fish rocks or something, um, or even little rocks from the yard. And if you want um, something more solid at each end, you could just get a rock that would fit in this end and a rock that would fit in the other end and put the rice in the middle. Um, I don't get a chance much to watch Gail's channel anymore. I used to watch it quite often, but I have seen that book weight a couple times, and it seems like, and I'm really not sure, because like I said, I've only seen it once or twice, um, but it seems like it was like solid, hard on each end, and kind of rubber in the middle. Like I said, I'm not sure, um, but if you wanted it hard on each end, you could put a rock at each end. And I'm just kind of working that rice down in there, making sure all the little spots are full. Give it a little pounce to, to let it really get down in there until I get it as full as I want it. It does not hurt for it to be a little bit loose. And it, oh, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to put my little bell in there. I'm going to. Just give it a little bit of a stuff. I don't want it right on the end. There. That worked. Okay. And I think probably an inch from the top. I'm going to fold this back down to where it was folded to restitch it. Maybe I'll put in just a little bit more. And then we're going to stitch it shut. And voila, it will be done. And then we'll see how it works. We'll see if it's heavy enough. Oh, 
Okay. So there we go. And I actually do have that needle that I just pulled out of my sewing basket is already threaded. I'm just going to put a knot in that. This is the thread is doubled. So I just went ahead and put a knot in it. So I'm using the doubled thread. It's a little bit sturdier to me. I like that. And I'm going to cut off this extra piece that was actually what was sewn across the top. And get rid of all of these little extra threads. And then because they already had it done, it's going to fold down very nicely for me because it was already like that. So you just fold it in a little bit. I like to put my knot on the inside so that I don't see it. So I just go from the inside and come out. And what I am going to do, because this is where they had it sewn, I am going to take just a couple stitches across there. And you're going to see this, but you could make it so that you don't see it. But I want to make sure that their line of sewing is still attached well to make sure that this was not all one thread and then I cut it. So I'm just going to kind of sew across there to hold that together. There we go. And then I'm just going to come up to the top, go inside, and come up either one side or the other. I'll show you what I mean in just a second. Okay. So it is folded down here and it is folded down here. So we've got the two sides. This is... Um, my mom taught me this when I was younger. It's called a hidden stitch. So I came right up through the middle of this side over here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my needle. I'm going to go kind of straight across from where my thread came out. I'm just going to go straight across from there. And I'm going to go down into this side, the other side. And then I'm just going to go a little bit under that fold and come back up again. And then what I'm going to do, just keep holding them like that, is just go across and back just a little bit. And take a little stitch inside of that fold. So just run your needle underneath that fold and come up a little bit further down than this stitch here. And then what happens is your stitch kind of disappears because it's underneath those folds and there's just a little bit of stitch on the top. So I came out on this side here. So I'm just going to come a little bit back from where I came out, go into the fold, and then come up a little ways down. And again, go to the other side a little bit prior to that stitch run underneath your fold and come up there getting it stuck come up on the other side and so what you're going to do is you're just going to oh and hopefully that was could you see that i'm gonna i'm not so sure if you could see it i was not looking through the camera so We'll do it a couple more times. Alrighty, so I'm, I'm out on this side. So I'm going to go to this side. Here's where my thread comes out. So I'm going to come back just a little bit on the opposite side. And go into the fold. Run under the fold a little ways. And come. Whoops. Go into the fold. Go down the inside the fold a little bit. And then come out. A little further down than this stitch here and then your little stitch kind of just disappears and your thread is under your fold so we're on this side so I'm going to come back a little bit from where we're coming out here I'm going to come back just a little bit go into the fold run down the fold a little bit and come out and so we're just going to do that other side go back just a little bit run under the fold Go a little further than where you were. And so that is, now that stitch was a little bit big. You want to be careful about that because if you take too big of a stitch, that rice will come out. You want to make sure that you have a nice, good, solid um, seam there. So 
if you're not sewing in something that, like if we were sewing in that stuffing, which couldn't just fall out of a little hole, you could make your stitches bigger. But something like rice, you want to make sure that you have a really good, solid um, seam there that only has small stitches, smaller than what the rice is, so that the rice can't fall out. Okay, so there we go. I've got all the way to the end. Now, here, because I have not knotted it yet, I am going to straighten this out before I put a knot in it. If I put the knot in it and it's all kind of bunched up, leave it. Because if you pull on it, you can break that thread and then obviously you're going to wind up with that seam coming out. So now that we've done that, we're just going to just kind of go back into the fabric. And my needle is, my thread is too short for me to take this needle and turn it around and get that point into that loop. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go backwards through that loop. So we put our thread in and you wind up with a loop here. I'm gonna just go backwards through that loop and hopefully it's long enough even that I can pull the needle all, yep, see I could pull that needle out. And that's easier than trying to lose the loop by trying to turn my needle around and get through that loop. So I'm gonna do that again because to me, I like to do it at least twice to make sure that there's a real knot there. Um, and, you know, with something like this, because it's got the rice in it, I'm going to do it one more time. Now, what will happen is at some point, especially if your needle is, or if your thread is really short, you'll go to put your needle through there. You'll put your needle through the hole and you'll pull it. And what will happen is it will get tight. Oh, it's going to happen, I think, right now. I probably could pull hard enough to pull it out, but see, now it's tight. There's my loop, my thread's going through it, but I can't get it out. At that point, then what you do is just pull your thread up, go right up to the eye of your needle and cut it off, take your needle out, and then give that thread a pull. And that's as far as you're gonna get. So there we go, we'll cut that off. And now we have our little kitty book weight that's got a little bell in it. The bell's not as loud as it was. It's not as jingly as it was there, but yeah, I still like it. Okay, so I'm gonna put this away and get it out of the way. And then we'll grab a journal. I've grabbed out one of my journals that I've been working on. That's really a lie. I haven't been working on it. Um, it's one that I had put aside that's not done yet um, and just didn't get back around to it for a while. So this now got it so that I pulled it back out again. Maybe I'll work on it some more. This journal is a, it's a collage journal or whatever you want to call. It's not background collage. It's just collaged pictures, but it, it has a solid, um, what you call it? This is a paper towel roll and then it's painted brown and then it has water glue with tea mixed into it painted on top to give it this lovely texture. So, and then this is just some scrapbooking paper that I had, and I like to hook my books together with rubber bands, and um, so I just put the large, like, headband rubber bands around my, around my spine before I put the decorative spine on it, and um, so that's what I have here, but this is a really solid spine, so when you go to open it up, and if we want to work on this page right here, this is what happens. And this is why Gail uses her like weight that she has. So she puts it on there so it will stay open so you can see what it is that you want to do. And again, like I said, for reading, um, I had a spot where there were some, okay, so like here's a tag. So let's say I want to hook this tag in now. And so... I want to go ahead and do a pocket for here that I can slide this into. Then this holds it very nicely and I can work on it. I can glue my pocket in, you know, make sure everything works right. And then even while I'm letting that dry, I can just leave that weight on there, walk away. And, you know, I'm not trying to weight it down. I'm just trying to let it dry so that when I close the book, it doesn't stick together. So I can just leave that there and this can dry while I'm off doing something else. And when I come back, this will be dry and I don't have to worry about maybe while I was gone, this slowly went like this and then touched and then now I glued it to the next page. 
So that's what you use them for. And again, like I said, if you're reading a book, they work great for cookbooks, although I don't know if you really want to have a tail in the kitchen, but maybe, um, depending on, you know, where you put your cookbook. But that is our super simple book weight, um, Gail Agostinelli style. Or, or usefulness so because I did I have seen that on her channel and it did look like it was very useful and it's just something really cute to have around too so thank you very much for stopping by what we're gonna need for next week put this up there is so we're gonna need some flowers I bought some lays from the Dollar Tree we need two types of flowers we need the daisy type flowers that have the little skinny daisy type petals, okay? And you want them to be in the daisy kind of format. You don't want a great big flower that has like two or three just like thin petals um, sticking off this way or that way. We want kind of the daisy style where there's the little petals that go all the way around, but they're the little skinny ones. I got these because I could have just bought a a bush of flowers, you know, whatever you call them, a I don't know, stem. Um, but there was two things. Number one, this comes with all these little beads. So now not only do I have flowers to play with that we're going to use next week, I've got lots of beads to put in my stash. The other thing is, if you look at how many flowers are on here, there's a lot of flowers. If I bought a stem of flowers, I don't think I would get this many. I think I might get maybe six or ten. And, you know, like there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, nineteen. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 19. There is 20 sets of two flowers in here. Now, if it was on a stem, it probably would be two flowers on each one of the things, but I don't think you'd get 20 flowers on one stem. So this is a really good deal to get a lot of flowers and to get all those beads. And then we also need another, um, I got another one. You Again, you can get a stem if you want to. And this flower is a five petal flower. And so you want a flower like this that's five petal flowers. Um, these are nice sizes. You don't want great big huge ones, but huge ones would work for what we're going to do. But I think that this is a nicer size. And then on this one, we have all these little tubes, which it's like, well, what could I do with those? You can wrap them with paper. You can use them in the center of your paper beads. You can wrap them with fabric. You can make boho beads out of them. So these little tubes are really great. Um, and so that gives you another little something to put in your stash. So we need one, two flowers. Um, we also need some bling from the Dollar Tree. You can choose any kind of bling you want. I like. I thought that the gold looked nice with these. Silver would have looked nice too, but I wanted gold. So we need some bling. We need some wire. I couldn't get any silver wire. So inside this red and black um, plastic coating is silver wire. If you can't find wire, if you're having a hard time finding wire or you can't find it at the Dollar Tree and everywhere else, it's quite expensive. Remember that the wide wired ribbon has wire in it that you can pull that wire out and you can use it. This is a little bit thicker, will work a little bit better, but that also does work. So if you don't have any wire or you wanna try this and you're playing along next week and you don't have any wire, um, if you've got any wired ribbon, just kinda of pull it down a little bit, grab hold that wire and pull it right out. And we're gonna get some little clamps little clips from the Dollar Tree and you know they have all kinds they have them in the food sections like you know for potato chips and that type of thing you know smaller is better um, you can always use more I like to start with smaller then later on if you want to get more clips maybe get some that are a little bigger for bigger projects but the small ones you can use two or three in a large space but the big ones sometimes you cannot use one in a little tiny space and finally some gel super glue so um this works really really good you know um to me it works as well as like your e6000 um i really like this one so we've got gel super glue and you don't want the runny super glue you do want the gel so there's one two three four five six so for next week we are going to spend our seven dollars and fifty cents so there will be nothing to put in the bank next week at the end of this week we had 
$71.50 in our bank. So I think I have decided what I think should be our next purchase. And hopefully, um, when we do next week's video, I will let you know what that is. I'm hoping I can get time to, to see if I can go online and find what it is that we need. Um, but I'm just, you know, I, I don't know exactly if I'll have time to do that right now or not. But again, that money's in our bank. It's there. Um, it's nice to have. So this is what we need for next week. And this is what we did this week. And I think that it just works really great to just go ahead and wherever you want to put it on your journal, just hold it open so you can do some work. And it's just a fun thing to do. So thank you very much for stopping by. I really do appreciate each and every one of you. And I hope that you all have an outstanding day. Bye-bye.